Greetings to our scholars everywhere. As we enter into our Sunday School lesson for today, our topic is Holda, Prophet of Wisdom. We're in lesson three on March the 21st, 2021, and our Bible basis is 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 through 20. Let's uh, dive into our lesson, Holda, Prophet of Wisdom, a woman prophetess. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the example of King Josiah, who reverenced and respected your word. And thank you for the example of the prophetess, Huldah, who spoke your words without hesitation. May we continue to love and appreciate you by reading and obeying your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And Father, we ask that you take the words of the lesson today, plant it in our hearts, O oh God that we might not sin against you. Lead and guide, direct us, O oh God, and let us be like the wise prophetess, Hulda, to speak your word in season and out of season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our memory verse, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. When thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Second Kings, the 22nd chapter and the 19th verse. And this is from the King James Version. These are the words of Huldah, the wise prophetess. And she is prophesying concerning the inquiry that Jehoshaphat made. He wanted to know from the Lord. He wanted a word from the Lord concerning the condition of Judah and Jerusalem. He knew that because of their sins, judgment was coming. And he sent the men to inquire of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at our students' response from our commentary. Believers intercede for God's people and for the nation. And saints, we have always been taught that it is the believers of this world that is holding back the judgment of God. We're standing in the gap for our loved ones, for our nation, for our communities, for our people. It is important we as Christians stand in the gap for the body of Christ, our loved ones, our communities, and for our nation. According to Ezekiel 22 and 30, and I sought for a man among them, and this is God Almighty talking, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. In our lesson today, we find that Josiah, King Josiah, stood in the gap for the people, for his nation, for the, such a time that he was living in stood in the gap and inquired of the Lord and asked God to help the people. He cleansed the, the uh, nation of Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, everything that looked like sin, we found out that he destroyed it. Can we find a man today that was standing in the gap for our loved ones? Are you standing in the gap for your loved ones? Are you standing in the gap for your community? Are you standing in the gap for our nation? Truly ever a time we need to pray and ask God for his grace, for his mercy is now. And we'll find out that some of the time that Josiah, King Josiah was living in is not different today. 
And we need to take the King Josiah's approach and stand in the gap. Our slide here is, is entitled Josiah's Revival. There was three decades, 30 years of Josiah's reign were among the happiest years experienced by Judah. And we know that in the Bible, it tells us when the righteous reign, the people are blessed. But when the wicked reign, my God, it is a testimony to the grace of God that a wicked king like Ammon could have such a godly son and successor. It's a testimony. At the age of 16, in the eighth year of his reign, Josiah personally began to seek after the God of David, his father. Second Chronicles 34 and 3. Would you like for your children to follow your godly advice, to be your successor, to seek after your God, the God of the universe, I always say uh, to my children that I pray that they will find the God that I serve in their lifetime to serve him, to live for him, to honor him, to obey him. We all like to have godly children and it is our responsibility to raise them up in the fear of the Lord and pray and ask God to help them to become that child that he would have them to be. Now, it is amazing how at the age of 16, in the eighth year of his reign, so that means that he started uh, reigning over Ju Ju Judah at the age of eight years old. Can you imagine? Can you imagine an eight-year-old becoming king? But at the age of 16, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. Let that be our prayer, that our children will seek after the God that we serve, the only true and living God. Josiah purified Judah and Jerusalem from idolatry by destroying whatever, listen to what it says, saints, whatever he recognized as not belonging to the worship of the true God. Anything that did not belong to God, to worship God, he destroyed it. He got rid of it. We too need to get rid of any and everything that do not glorify or worship our God. We want to purify ourselves, purify our bodies, our heart, our mind first. And then we, we should have homes that are purified, homes that our children can live in to know that in God we trust. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We honor him. We uh, recognize him. We serve him on Sunday. We serve him during the week. We serve an almighty God. Prayer should be in the home. Your children should hear you pray. Your children should see you pray. And not only that, they should be joining in with you in prayer. Praying over your children, my God, my God, while you have a chance. Pray over your children. Anoint your children that God might bless them to become that godly son. That he might make himself known to them. Truly, truly, they need to know God for themselves. Let us pray and have a Josiah's revival, even in our homes. So let's look at our introduction. Following Hezekiah's death in 2 Kings 20 and 21, several kings succeeded him. Among them were Manasseh, Ammon, and Josiah. Josiah was eight years old when he became king of Judah, and he reigned for 31 years. Shaphan was given consent by Josiah to renovate the temple. So here we see that Josiah uh, gave consent 
to Shaphan, I believe, and told him to go with other men to renovate. He put him over renovating the temple. The temple had been destroyed because of Judah and Jerusalem's disobedience to God. But they were about to renovate the temple. And while the renovation was going on, Hilkiah the priest, the high priest, found a copy of the book of the law, which is like our Bible today, the book of Moses and Deuteronomy, and those five books in the Bible. They found the copy of the book of law in the temple. And Shaphan read the book of the law to Josiah. And what was Josiah's reaction? He tore his clothes after hearing the scribes reading. He tore his clothes, which was symbolic to humility back in those days, which was symbolic to heartbreaking. The king was distressed because he realized that the nation of Judah was far from God in their morality, obedience, and spirituality. Does that remind you of today? How our nation has gotten so far from God. The laws of our land has gotten so far from God. We can see immorality all around us. We can see disobedience all around us to the word of the Lord. We can see unrest all around us, just like today. And when Josiah read the book of the law, read the word of God, he was in distress. How shall we be feel how should we be feeling today when we look at our world, when we look at the news, when we see our communities? How should we feel? What should we do about it? Should we just allow things to go on as normal? This has become the new norm. When you hear things, tragedy on the news, when you become so used to tragedy and pestilence and hard times that it just doesn't bother you anymore. Does it not bother you anymore that our children are waking up every day living in sin? It should bother us as saints of God. We see that Josiah uh, tore his clothes. And let's find out what else did Josiah do concerning this condition. Our next slide is entitled, in our first outline, God's Prophetess Huldah. In 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter in the 14th verse. Therefore, Josiah called Hilkiah, Shaphan, a high... Ahikam, Shaphan's son, and Asaria, a servant of the king, to inquire of God. This is our answer right here. When we see the condition of our world, we should inquire of God. What the people should do to get right with him. My God, my God, and most of us know the answer. We need to sound the alarm and sound the trumpet in Zion. And let people know, let the word of God go out. What they must do to get right with God. So Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam and Akbar, Achbar and Shaphan and Asaria went unto Helda the prophetess the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikba, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college or in the southern part, and they communed with her. They went to inquire of Hilda, the prophetess. They wanted to know what the people should do to get right with God. Hulda was there during the time when uh, Josiah, King Josiah, was uh, had revival, was cleaning and purging the place. And 
doing those things that was right in the sight of the Lord. And they sought her out because she was a part. She seen, she heard what was going on with Josiah. Zephaniah and Jeremiah was prophets during Josiah's reign. Josiah, though, he sent men to a woman prophetess who was present during the time of Josiah's spiritual revival in Jerusalem and Judah. And so let's find out what Huldah, the prophetess, had to say concerning, thus said the Lord. Our second outline, God's prophecy through Huldah. And she said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. My God, listen to what Huldah had to say to the prop to the king Josiah. She is quoting the words of the Lord. She did not hold back. She did not sugarcoat. She let him have it just as the Lord told her to. Thus said the Lord, I will bring evil upon this place, not only upon this place, but upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read. He already had read it. That when you go against God, sin against God, it brings destruction. It brings the wrath of God. King Josiah knew this, but he wanted to know what can the people do. God spoke to Huldah. And she delivered his words as instructed. As Josiah had anticipated, Huldah's prophecy was that of judgment. Because they worship idol gods, Jerusalem and its inhabitants would taste evil days, even as the book of the law prescribed. She spoke a direct message to the king's messengers. God will bring evil upon Judah and its inhabitants. Even all the words or curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah. She did not hold back. She gave it to him just like God gave it to her. She didn't sugarcoat it. For the wages of sin is death. Saints. Are we pacifying, petting, and compromising with our children, with our loved ones, with our friends? Or are we taking a stand and letting them know what thus said the Lord? We don't want to sugarcoat the word of God. But let it be known that the wrath of God is against those that do evil. That sin has Weighs it, wages. The wages of sin is death. You pay a, a, a price for the way you live your life, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We want the world to know that God is watching each and every one of us. And He said it in His Word. That the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Huldah spoke with boldness. Because they had forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore... My wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. The Israelites' unholy fire for idols has sparked a conflagra conflag conflagration 
a large disastrous fire that threatens human life, health, and or property. Of God's righteous wrath that will burn down their nation. Saints, the wages of sin. It kindles the wrath of God. He's angry with the sinner every day. I heard someone say one time, God is not mad at me. I do a lot of good things. So God is not mad at me. But guess what? The Bible says he's angry with the wicked every day. If you are a liar, if you lie about things, if you're deceitful, you will be judged. God is not uh, a man that he should lie. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. And he spoke it in his word that the wages of sin leads to death. But saints, the gift of God is eternal life. Let's not sugarcoat the word of God, but help us to be bold in our dealings with people. Let them know the truth. Your works will not get you to heaven. You can be a good hearted person. You can be a, a, a giving person. You can have compassion on others. You can be full of good works, but your works will not save you. And our third outline, God's promise of hope through Hoda. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, all right, Hoda the prophetess is getting ready to uh, send a word of hope. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Because thy heart was tender. And saints, this is what we all need today. A tender heart towards God. And thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. He tore his clothes and he humbled himself before the Lord. When thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse and has rent thy clothes. This is King Josiah. He rented his clothes and wept before me. Oh my God, true repentance. I also have heard thee, said the Lord. And this is what it takes today, saints. Let's not get around it. Let's not sugarcoat it. Let everyone know, our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones, our, in our communities, everywhere we go. We, he, God said in his word that he would, that men would lift up holy hands unto the Lord with a tender heart, saints, with humility and with humbleness of spirit and weep before the Lord. Let him know that you're sorry for the sins that we have done. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it brings about repentance, true repentance, telling God you're sorry for your sin, telling, asking God to forgive you for everything you said and everything you've done that was not pleasing in his sight. And ask him to change your heart, change your mind, the word of the Lord said we must be born again. Each and every one of us must be born again. Born of the spirit, not born of this old flesh, not continuing in our flesh, doing those things, those ungodly things, unseemly things that God cannot be glorified in. But when you are truly born again, when you're truly a Christian, which means Christ-like, that means you're like Christ. You do the things, you have the mind of Christ. You do those things that Christ would have you to do. You have a changed heart and a changed mind. Saints, Josiah wept before the Lord 
and God heard him. He saw his repentance. The events of judgment will occur after he dies in peace because he was responsive and humble regarding the words of the Lord. This moves the burning anger of the Lord against Judah farther into the future, at least until after Josiah dies. Judgment didn't come in his days. He had peace in his days. He had a revival in his days. He turned Judah and Jerusalem around back to God. And so we have it here today, saints. We should be turning souls back to God. We should be standing in the gap and praying that our children will humble themselves, would repent and turn their life around to serve the only true and living God. We too should repent and ask God for his mercy, for his grace, so that his anger can be kindled from our children and our loved ones, causing them to repent, causing them. We can't repent for them, but we can pray and stand in the gap, call their names out before the Lord, asking God, to give them a spirit of repentance, that they would turn from everything that's not like God. You might say, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything bad. I go to church. I listen to the word of God. But have you had a change of heart? Have you asked Christ to come into your heart? Have you repented of all your sins? Have you asked God to help you not to sin no more, to uh, not only wash you, but cleanse you from all filthiness of your flesh. Take away everything. Josiah destroyed everything that he saw that did not bring true worship to God. And we are to destroy anything in our life that's not pleasing in God's eyesight. We're to get rid of it and to humble ourselves before him that he might save us save our children, save our loved ones, save in our communities, save in the White House, save our nation, oh God. Bring men and women, boys and girls everywhere to repentance. Anoint us, oh God, for your service that we can sound the alarm and sound the trumpet. Bring the good news that Jesus is still in control and he yet saves, he yet sanctifies which means uh, to sanctify means to, uh, to cleanse you and wash you and separate you for himself, to use you for his glory. Hold up prophecy fulfilled. If God spoke it, he shall bring it to pass. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gather, gathered into thy grave in peace. This is the message for King Josiah. Because he repented and because he caused revival in the land, because he turned the people back to God, he said, you're not going to see this evil in your day, but you're going to go to your grave in peace. And thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring up on this place. And they brought the king word again. Saints, are we standing in the gap that God will prolong? He's a long suffering God. It's not his will that any man should perish. And we don't want to see the evil, the, uh, the judgment, the wrath of God in this day and time that we're living in. We're asking God to hold back judgment. We know that the church will be raptured out of here. We believe, oh God, oh God, but we're praying that while we're occupying until he come, his long suffering, that our children and our children's children will be brought to Christ. The prophecy was fulfilled. Josiah died in battle, but he was buried in peace, according to Second Chronicles 35, 24 and 25. The enemy that was to destroy Jerusalem and carry the nation into captivity 
did not attack the land until three years later when the throne was occupied by another king, King Jehoiakim. The reading of God's word, as it always does, spoke to the heart of the young king and stirred his spirit to conviction and repentance. King Josiah, that young king, read the word of God and it stirred his heart, stirred his spirit to conviction. Saints, the word of God should do the same for us today. When we go and sit up under the word of God, when the preacher preach or the evangelist missionary teach, that word is quick and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. And if you can sit up under the word of God and still remain stiff and rebellious and not turn from your sin, my God, my God, be careful, be careful. The word of God should bring conviction. The word of God should bring repentance. I don't understand people that can go to church and sit up under the word, that powerful word of God, and not be moved in their spirit to repent and to get themselves, their lives right with God. We see it all the time. We don't know their heart, but God knows the heart. Man look on the outward appearance, but God knows the heart. And these days will come back up in judgment don't sit up under the word of god sunday after sunday sitting in bible class and allowing the word of god to just go in one ear and come out the other being a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word saints we are to be doers of the word of god you don't want the wrath of god and the judgment of god to be brought upon your life you have no excuse when you're sitting up under the word of God and your heart is not being touched or stirred. Your heart should be convicted. It should bring about godly sorrow. It should bring about repentance. It should bring about a desire to please God and to want to live for him. Not just on Sunday, but every day of your life. You want to give your life to God and he has a plan for you. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us to do his will. God has a plan for your life and it's more than just enjoying your life and planning your life and you're in control of your life. But he desires to have complete surrendering from you, complete control over your life. And I tell you, you won't, you will not regret it. You would have such a great joy, such a great peace, knowing that you're in the will of the Father. Let's fulfill uh, God's word, God's plan for your life. Don't let the uh, life pass you by. Okay, the prophecy was fulfilled. Josiah died in peace, and the reading of God's word was very effective effective in this young king's life. We want to emphasize this slide, our last slide, inquire of the Lord. Saints, each and every one of us should inquire, should ask God, what is it that you would have me to do with my life? We're to acknowledge him in all of our ways. We're to ask him to direct our path and order our footsteps. When the last time, when was the last time you consulted the Lord by way of his word? Saints, we want to ask God, what is it you would have me to do according to his word? It is so important that we study and meditate on God's word. How often? Daily. We're to meditate and study God's word. The Bible tells us to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We ought to know the words of the Lord. We ought to know what thus said the Lord. We are to get acquainted with the God that made us, that created us, 
that knows everything there is to know about us. We want to know his word. So we're to study his word. We're to meditate on it day and night. We're to consult him according to his word. And listen, that way we can rightly divide the word of truth. We're to speak the truth of his word day and night. We don't have to be ashamed of his word. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Amen. We don't have to be ashamed of the word of God because his word is true. His word is proven. My God. Thank you, Jesus. He has a proven word. He has a track record. We can commune with God through his word. That's how he speaks to us, saints. That's how he communes with us. We communicate with him through his word. Proverbs 3 and 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways, not just some of your ways. All your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Hebrew 4 and 16, let us therefore come boldly. Aren't you so glad that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need? And saints, that's not the only time. Again, that's not the only time that we want to inquire of the Lord is when we're in need, but we want to inquire in his temple daily. We want to ask him, what is it that you would have me to do? What is the plan? What is the purpose for my life? Mold and make me and shape me, direct me and help me to fulfill your plan, not my plan, but God's plan for your life. That ends our Sunday school lesson. We thank God for each and every one of you. And we pray that this word be a blessing to you, that we can hide the word of God in our hearts, that we might not sin against God. We can support our Sunday school. Thank God each and every one of us have at least $5 that we can send in to Sunday school. That would be a blessing to our to the man of God, to the church. Uh, our pastor does not really ask us for money, uh, but we know that the Sunday school needs to be supported. And we're asking each and every one of you to bless our Sunday school with GiveLify, look it up, New Life Community, Church of God in Christ on Chambers Road in Delwood, Missouri. And also you can do it by cash app. Make sure you put New Life Community Sunday School. Express that this is for our Sunday school. Cash app, dollar sign, cash, new life. May the word of God bless your soul. May it change your life. May it cause you to have peace and joy fellowship with and commune with God in the Holy Ghost. We thank you for each and every one of you. May God bless you. Make your comments known uh, in our, um, on uh, our app here. Make sure you uh, leave your word, leave a word of encouragement. On Facebook, leave a word of encouragement. Also, we are on YouTube. Leave a word of encouragement. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know that. Let's let Facebook and YouTube know that this is the kind of material that we want to have in social media. May God bless you. See you next time.